Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Painted in Color podcast. I'm Lauren Brown, joined by co-host Mia Araujo. And today we're going to talk about social media and creating versus consuming versus just feeling like you're inadequate based on all the other people who are out there on social media. (laughs) (laughs) So Mia, would you like to start? You shared this wonderful video with me and um, just give a summary about what it was, please. Yeah, um, I saw this video a couple years ago, um, but it was uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, the actor, uh, did a like a 13 minute TED talk. So it's really short, you can just Google it. Um, and it's about paying attention versus getting attention. And what he's saying with those two things is uh, he's talking about the creative process versus what he as an actor requires, which is attention uh, for his work, you know, to be perceived, I suppose. But, um, but also just even artists, like anything we create, we're doing it for some attention at the end of the day, right? Like we're not just making it for us. There was one thing he said that I had to write down where he was like saying creativity is becoming the ends or, or the means to the end, which is yeah. uh, which is getting attention. And when that's happening, that's actually a bad thing. And I agree, because it's like, I, f- I feel like if, um, if posting, you know, your work on social media is how you make your income, that's a different thing. But if it's, if it's the reaction that you're kind of getting addicted to, then that's, you know, you're just chasing something that's not within your control. And that's just like a bottomless pit, really. And that's why it feels so insatiable. Like it doesn't matter how many followers you get or how many likes you get, it you'll always need more in the next one, like for the next post you make and stuff. And and that's certainly what I was I was facing without even knowing it, you know? And I just I think for a lot of us, it's just a nature of just being on it. That the more you're on it, the more you're sort of like your brain is kind of dialed into this feedback loop you know um but to backtrack a little bit what in the paying attention side um you know for him he associates that with creativity because when he's focused uh, like when the director says you know action like that's almost like his cue to be zeroed in on what he's doing and when he described that I just I just think of my flow state when I'm just drawing or painting and nothing else in the world matters and uh, I just felt like increasingly that was becoming you know well, that was becoming more rare for me, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, since January, I've honestly been on mostly a hiatus from social media, and I felt that more, I felt more able to focus, because at least for me, that was, uh, you know, just being on social media all the time was something that was preventing me from being able to zero in, because some mm-hmm. part of my brain was always hooked on to something else, um, so yeah, uh, that really captivated me, and, and I just wanted to chat about it with you today. <laughs> yeah, that message definitely resonates because this is something that has been on my he- in my head for the past few days. Now that I've been freed from freelance, I have been able to actually think about my personal work again and what I want to create. And yesterday, I finally started sketching my sketchbook again, which is something I hadn't done in a while. But it was so funny because when I was doing that, I was sketching more mushroom people. Um, and a dear friend of mine, Tim Von Rudin, had dressed as like a mushroom man. And like, I really, I told, I, asked, I told him I wanted to draw this character and he was like, yes, please. And so I was like, okay. So I started sketching out this character and I was immediately thinking, you know, as I was sketching it, I was really enjoying the process, really enjoying the flow. And then I started thinking, I'm like, oh, like, how is this going to play on like, you know, social media? Like, is it framed in a way? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I had to stop myself in the middle of that flow of thought and be, and think like, no, like I'm just drawing this because I think it was cool and it was it was resonating with me. But now this unconscious thought process flows right in to interrupt my creative process to think about how can I make this more commercial? How can I make this look better on social media is yeah. basically the, the question of how can I get more likes and follows? Yeah. And that actively stunts my creativity because it limits the things that I feel like will be successful for a yeah. mass audience. Because like when I'm happy as creating, I'm not thinking about the things that other people are going to think about the art and like there's some things I draw that are weird and when I draw those weird things I'm not thinking about anybody else but myself and anybody anything else but the flow of art and being in that moment and whatever how I interpret this image that resonated with me and social media over the past you know 10 years like 20 I guess 20 years really um maybe 15, I don't know, like, because I started posting on DeviantArt when I was probably about, um, I think, 13. Mm. Just thinking about how my art would come across to an audience of people has been something that I do feel like has kind of stopped me from doing my fullest art, really, 
Um, cause, all, cause all you're thinking about how it's going to be perceived and it's really hard not to chase it. I mean, that serotonin rush or that, like that endorphin rush is so satisfying when you share something on social media and you get a ton of likes and a ton of follows from it. And you're like, it's that instant validation. Yeah. And it's very hard not to chase that feeling because, you know, it's, it's, I mean, in some, in some aspect, we need that. We kind of, you know, we're humans are a very social people we need to have the validation from others to, to know that what we're doing is not, you know, just garbage. Like, we, cause like, otherwise we don't know what to make of our own art. We're like, well, I, well, yeah, sure. I have this, but how are other people going to see it? Like, is this anything? Is this nothing? But sometimes it is really nice to just think about the art that you make and the fact that you're making it because it makes you happy or because it gets your mind off of the stress or because you just go, you get to go in a trance when you're making it. And like you, it's been harder for me to get into that trance state because I've been thinking so much about all these external things that are interrupting my internal creative process. So I wholeheartedly agree with that message that it's, it's the, you know, the measure of creating versus, um, you know, just like trying to put stuff out there and trying to think about how everything is going to be perceived. It's really stunting sometimes, but yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of about balance, really, because I think that social media is a good thing. And, and we've talked to some guests on here, for instance, Kofi, who's mm -hmm. from, you know, another country and is able to get, you know, a lot of attention to his art and able to work with, you know, American companies and stuff like that. But social media is kind of an equalizer uh, for, for people from other countries. Um, and I think it is really important. And even just for, for reaching out and connecting with people just in general. I think it is really, it can be really positive. I think the problem is when you find yourself like sort of like having an unhealthy addiction to it in, in any way. And that's the thing, like our brains are not, have not evolved for this amount of information all at once for this mm -hmm. amount of eyeballs on us, you know, even if it's on a sort of virtual like stage. So um, I think that's something too, that just mental health wise, just knowing how to process all that attention, it doesn't come naturally because we're not, we don't know how to do that as humans, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I think that it's just good to always take a step back and like kind of do a detox. And ever since I did this, this recent one, I, I, I guess like the last few months that I've just kind of gone in and made one post, I feel like that day that I posted, I'm suddenly hyper aware of what's mm -hmm. going on. And it's just, and even that one day, I'm just like, wow, I really don't want to go back and do this full time. Um, and that's just what I need. But, but yeah, I think it's just always healthy to just reassess just because and remind yourself that the, just, this just isn't an, a normal relationship that we've evolved with, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's good. It's good to find your limits with social media. Um, you know, in addition to consuming, people can also be a very hyper aware of the doom scrolling and all the things that are out there and also comparing themselves to other artists and other people who have, you know, who post every day or post a certain type of content or have an amount of followers. And I mean, everybody's story is different. Everybody's tolerance and threshold is different. So it's extremely difficult to compare and I can't say don't do it, but just know that whatever image you're seeing projected up front is literally just that. It's just an image. It's, it's what somebody wants you to perceive of them. And so you're basically reading their story that they've written about themselves. It's not the true, you know, reality of what's going on there. So you may think that that 16 year old who can post every day amazing art has it really easy, but maybe it's rough for them or maybe that's all they can do to cope with whatever is going on. Or maybe they do have it easy and they can just do that, but that's not everybody. Their brain just works differently and you have to do what's best for you and you have to do what's healthy for you. So, you know, like for me, I'm not great at social media because I know that getting too sucked into it will burn me out. And so I just, you know, I, I, would, I would like to use it better, but right now I just post at my own pace. And when I actually finish something, I'm happy to share it with other people. Um, it is nice to get that validation and I can't deny that it feels really good, but I do it very intermittently. So I don't get that kind of like a feeling of being hyper aware or keyed in. Um, and even my latest piece that I shared, there was like a negative comment about it. And like, you know, it, it raged me for like two hours. And I was just like, I don't like feeling like this. Yeah. Like, this isn't fun. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, and then I had to detach myself again and back away. So I'm like, okay, like this is not really healthy. So I'm just going to step away from this and just let it rest. And then, you know, and then go back at it tomorrow when I feel more mentally, um, you know, uh, ready to deal with whatever is going on here. But, um, but yeah, like you just have to be careful about, um, you know, your own capacity, your own thresholds and what you can tolerate and what you can't. 
if you love social media, that's great. Like, you know, keep going. Um, but if you feel like you're getting tired and worn out, then, you know, don't be afraid to take a step back and don't be afraid to set boundaries, um, you know, with strangers and with your friends. And, you know, if you need to back away from any of your channels, even Discord, private channels, you can say, hey, I'm probably not going to be around for a few days. Just, you know, don't expect me. It's fine. But boundaries are healthy. And um, in establishing your, knowing your limits is, is very healthy. So that's what I would recommend to people. Definitely. And I mean, on a platform like Twitter as well, where it's just like you see the, the, the posts that get the most traction are ones that, and even Facebook actually, are ones that inspire really negative reactions like anger or fear. Um, those are the ones that are shared the most. And so I think there's something really dangerous there that I've been just, I mean, all of us have been watching for the last few years. Um, and that like, so even just logging in and just, <laughs> and just reading for a few minutes would suddenly change my, my whole like mood in terms yeah. of just, I, I'm, I'm not even noticing that everything I'm reading is, is like very amped up in terms of, um, of like emotion. And so um, for me, it's just something that kind of throws my emotions out of whack. Then I can't, I can't then just put that aside and immediately create, I have to do something else to kind of get in the zone. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, just, I think in every um, sort of aspect, well, I guess why I was bringing that up as well is just that if that also isn't your style of of communicating or of, um, or even if the kind of work that is promoted more on these channels isn't really your style, I think you feel the need to conform to that on some level because the few times that what you do lines up with the algorithm, you were rewarded for it. And, and without even really wanting to, you feel that, that rush and start kind of questioning whether I should do this more or maybe not even questioning it, just doing it more. And yeah. so it's always just good to take like a step back and really analyze and see the patterns, I guess, in this kind of stuff and, and, and check in with yourself and say, is this the kind of stuff I want to do? Um, mm -hmm. And, and it's okay if it is, it's just like, I just don't think you should feel like you should just because you're being rewarded for it because the, the algorithm is there for a reason, you know, and it's to make them money and it has nothing to do with you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's designed to make us work for like, you know, as hard as we can for for whatever payoff that we're going to get but we have it's like basically we are working to cater to a company yeah is what and what it has ended up happening to us and that's like that's what happened to us as artists like that's the opposite of what's supposed to be happening to us as artists yeah if you think about <laughs> it so <laughs> you are just maybe internalize that a little bit and realize that's like oh i see what's happening and yeah. obviously you know because they have catered the algorithm to work in a certain way and, you know, a lot of artists who, especially independent artists who need that for income, they, obviously we have to work with it, which is unfortunate, but we have to find our way of working with it. We can't just like, you know, I don't, I don't think it's very fair to like expect all of us to work in the same way, but that's exactly what the algorithm would ask us to do. But I think there's other ways around it too. And also there's other kinds of social media. If like one system doesn't work for you, like Instagram right now is really intensive. They want you to do reels and all that stuff. And I'm like, reels take time. Videos like take time. Yeah. So, um, you know, like maybe, maybe Twitter, which is like a more rapid is best for you. Or maybe Instagram, wait, no, it's not Instagram. I just said Instagram. Um, maybe uh, TikTok is better for you or whatever it is. But, um, you know, just like all, like try to find what works for you if you're going to, you know, get your platform going. But try not to stress about the amount of followers that you have. Try not to stress about the amount of likes you get. Um, and just like try to grow it organically as you can and try to grow by being authentic to yourself first and foremost, because it's very easy to uh, get hung up on the things that people have responded to. But if those things that people have responded to are not really what, you, what is in your wheelhouse, then oftentimes artists can find themselves running towards that, even though they're not happy with that work. And, you know, everybody on social media jokes about that, you know, that shit post that they did that got all these likes and everything. And like their beautiful art that they spent hours on got like very little recognition, yeah. but that doesn't mean that you should be shit posting all the time. Yeah. Like that, that just means that it got the notice of people easier just because it was um, quick read, easy to understand. Yeah. But if that's not what defines you as an artist and that they're not really there for you anyway. So you can't really cater that image to people because that's not actually you. It was yeah. just, and it's okay. Exactly. Yeah. And actually this makes me think as well, just about the whole idea of, of when to seek attention and when to not, because I think that there's, there is a temptation at every point in your career to seek attention because you need eyes on your work, especially if you are an independent artist, because you need people 
to know that you're there, to know that you're selling things, to know that you're available to hire. And so, and I guess I'm saying this from personal experience, like back in 2015, 2016, my, my drawing skills were really needing some work. And yet I felt the need to post every day. I was in that, like somebody had said, oh, the algorithm rewards you if you post every day. And so I was like stressed every day trying to create oh, some God. drawing to share. And looking back, I went back and deleted a bunch of them because I'm, they were horrible, you know? And I was, because I was not only producing out of pressure and, and like time stress, you know, I wasn't even planning things ahead. I was like so scared of missing a day because I thought I'd be punished by the algorithm. And I, I wasn't even rewarded in the first place, which is hilarious. <laughs> and it would have been so much better if I had just said, you know what, I'm going to take a month off and just work on some art and then post my favorite stuff Yeah, when it's ready, you know? No, I, I guess I'm thinking like any, anytime you catch yourself paying too much attention to something external that you have no control over, that's something that I'm trying to do where it's like, am I worrying about something that I literally can't control? Then maybe I should just not give that so much attention and just instead, like I can focus on my work, you know, it's like I can control that or how much time I dedicate to my art, I can control that. So I'd rather, you know, spend my time focusing on that rather than something that I have absolutely no control over. We have no control over what goes viral. It's so random completely. So random. And yeah. what I would much rather do is focus my attention on a piece that I really believe in and just yeah. see what happens rather than think so much in the front about how people are gonna perceive something. I'm like, I'm gonna make the art that makes me happy and they can make of it however they will. But I am done with the days of scrolling through Instagram and my own page and seeing the likes versus each other. And it's like, okay, why did this one get more attention? Why is that? <laughs> like, it's useless. <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely useless. I'm, I'm like, no, nah, I'm good actually. And yes, there is a method to this. And there is a reason why certain pieces get more attention than others. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just about readability and people are scrolling quickly and each platform is used differently. You can learn all those rules, but that, I mean, that doesn't make me happy. Yeah. <laughs> Learning all those rules doesn't make me happy. Learning how to make my art better and how to maximize the imagination that I have at my disposal and learning how to con consume content so that I get more excited about creating my art is what makes me happy. And at the end of the day, likes are not what is really making me happy. It's dope to get validation, but it's the creation process that is the best part of it. So. Yeah. Just try not to get too hung up on it and use it however you need to. It is a tool just like everything else is. So think of it that way. It, it doesn't rule you. It doesn't dictate what you do. It's just a tool. Thank you everybody for joining us. I hope you got something out of this shorter episode of Painted in Color and don't get too hung up on social media. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs>